welcome the star of Body of Proof, Dana Delaney. Yeah! So, Dana, so good to have you on the show. Do you like playing a medical examiner? I do. Yeah, I like the science of it. I like all so much stuff. so she told me to call her doctor throughout the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it is it weird that there is a small part of me that's always had a fascination with being a medical examiner? No, well, you have to do all the autopsies when you study, right? When we well, study. We yeah, but then, uh, but then the yeah. goal, of course, in the practice of medicine, is to, no. that is to yeah. not go down that pathway. Mm -hmm. But you, it, it is amazing in the work that you do on the show how realistic it is. Mm, yeah, well, we have really good uh, special effects people, uh, <laughs> which helps. But, um, yeah, I mean, as you know, once you cut that body open, you can see exactly how the person lived. You know, so part of being a medical examiner is phys figuring out cause of death, but what if death were not permanent? Let's take a look at this. A neuroscience student who recently passed away is making plans to come back. The 23-year-old woman sadly succumbed to brain cancer this January and chose to have her body cryogenically frozen. Putting her faith in science, she wants doctors to resuscitate her once they find a cure. But opposers of cryogenics say that freezing human remains is economically and ethically irresponsible and could lead science down a dangerous path. So the question is, should we be freezing human remains for a second chance at life, or should we put this practice on ice? So, of course, the theory here is that using liquid nitrogen, a freezing agent, you can literally take the body down to, this is negative 320 degrees. That's cold. If anyone's ever felt negative 320 degrees, it's really Talk cold. Talk about brain and, freeze. And to show, to show everyone how <laughs> quickly, you know, this is your brain, this is your brain. Yeah. What, on drugs, brain they drugs. do the eggs this thing. Your well, this is your brain nitrogen. when frozen with liquid nitrogen. Oops. Whoa. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, show us the brain. Wow. Oh, wow. Ooh. That, so is, sort your, of that like is your brain frozen on liquid Gee nitrogen. Wish. So That was fast. So the idea, I guess, is you, you freeze your body right, right after you die, and then hopefully a couple hundred years from now, the technology is better. They can cure whatever killed you, bring you back to life, and then you get a second chance. Mm -hmm. That'd be kind of cool. Wake oh, up, so wake up you, in the what, 24th what century. So Man. you're you're game. You Fine. would do it, yeah. Drew. Would you do it? Well, I guess. Dana. I mean. No. <laughs> no. Why not? Well, what everybody not? else I mean, you if... love is not here. Why would yeah. you want to be around without? Well, freeze you everybody then. Cool to be in this, like this. Freeze. <laughs> Put the whole family in a deep freeze. Yeah. Yeah. You could probably drive your jet car that we were supposed to have by now. So Kinda there's like a, a natural caveman. cycle to life, mm -hmm. and I think you have to respect that cycle. Yeah. Well, this is certainly a very interesting uh, phenomenon. Join us now on the phone to help explain more about cryonics is Max Moore. He's with the Alcor Life Extension Foundation. That's where neuroscience <laughs> student Kim Schwozy had her body frozen in hopes of being revived one day in the future. Now, Max, we're, we're sitting here talking about some of the issues with cryonics. Can you just go through the science quickly in terms of how it works? Yes, immediately after clinical death has been declared, we immediately start the stabilization portion and immediately beginning cooling. The idea being to minimize the damage to the cells as quickly as possible. Then we will transport the patients to our facility here in Arizona. And then the surgical part of the uh, procedure begins where we access major blood vessels, wash out as much blood and other cellular fluids as possible and replace those with a cryoprotectant solution, which is essentially a medical grade antifreeze if you like. And then we gradually reduce the temperature to minus 196C or minus 320 Fahrenheit and store the patient for as long as necessary at that temperature. And a century from now, they will be in the same condition in which they started. And I think people need to understand you can't just freeze a body because what Max is describing is the need to get as much water out as possible because if you freeze water, then thought expands. That's just not going to work. Max, thank you so very much for joining us.